Welcome to PM Express Business Edition. Get onto the market today and you realize that you're paying a little bit more than what you paid for that item that you bought maybe some two weeks ago. But what about those who would describe the situation as normal? After all, prices of goods and services always goes up on the market, maybe every week. What about those who want to describe the situation as abnormal in terms of the surge being unexpected? So what is causing this and how can it be managed? Well, on PM Express Business Edition, we're trying to get some answers and solutions as we engage an economist, Professor Peter Cote, who will help us get the impact of what is happening on the economy. Dr. Saman Kra is an investor and he plays in the international commodity market. Let us appreciate what is happening out there and how it's impacting on the local prices here. Charles Mensah is a financial consultant and how should businesses also manage the situation? Dr. Joseph Obeng, he is president of the Ghana Union of Traders, and he'll tell us what is happening in the market. As you look at the surge in prices of some goods on the market and how it can be managed. All these things wrapped up on PM Express Business Edition. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to PM Express Business Edition as we look at the surge in prices of goods and services on the market and what is causing this. I'll be engaging a financial consultant, Charles Mensah, who is joining me via Zoom. Also, Peter Cote is an economist, also joining me via Zoom. And also, uh, Dr. Joseph Obeng, he is the president of Guta. And all these uh, distinguished gentlemen will be joining me via Zoom. And Dr. Sam Ankara. He's also an investor and he plays in the international community market and also via Zoom, they also be joining me. But first, we bring you a report from Kumase about bakers there complaining about the situation on the ground and why they might be forced to increase their prices. And then I come back, connect with my guest via Zoom. Let's see this report. Flour, milk, margarine, sugar and yeast are common ingredients used in bread production. The prices of these imported ingredients have shot up on the markets. Merchants say increases in fuel prices and freight charges at the ports account for the price hikes. See, for a tumor, it can be a, it can be a because it can be a tumor. The increase in fuel prices affect commodities. And a two, late, I will be here, no outside, not a four thousand, this is a twelve thousand dollars. Every week you hear a new price. Every week or two you hear a new price. The producers are also telling us the subsequent week we're going to have another increase of five cities, meaning that we're having ten cities for only this month and it's not going to stop so we get to know that fuel uh, the prices of fuel is stable the fleet is stable and then other things like the taxes are also stable we're going to have the increments day in day out we, we worry sometimes we pity the bakers and other things since uh, you see this year you know you have to two uh, flour more than more than six times Flour prices have gone up about six times in the first half of 2021. An earlier plan to increase prices of bread was shelved. However, a major industry player, BB Bread, is among the brands known to have increased their prices. Theresa Bwachi Bedu is CEO of BB Bakery. She fears any delay to increase prices will collapse the business. Definitely we are going to increase it because the product that we are using in making our bed, you know, everything is gone up. Every time we say we want to increase it, the smaller bakers wouldn't join. Some importers of raw materials for bread production have advised Baytick to a uniform price. Bakers in so moon team or munya what Nancy Omu yes omu omu ye meeting Bakers should come up with a uniform price. A quash man for customers one more and the omu nyome kwakoma. Bread retailers lament the price increase will affect their trade. Say citizen or M Y can almost my five cities. But as a mudin say, and you man at a doors, a doors, a can of doors more. 
the new price is not favorable. Our consumers are refusing to buy. My colleagues haven't sold much bread since morning. So, what are consumers saying? I'm in support of the new price. The quality of the bread should be maintained if prices are increased. Mona Lisa Frempon reporting. And that was Mona Lisa bringing us the situation in Kumasi. And this is one of several instances that we are recording on the market in terms of prices of some goods going up. Let's get on to our Zoom platform. Professor Peter Corte is an economist. Charles Mensah is a finance person, a business strategist. Dr. Joseph Obeng is with Guta and Dr. Sam Ankara. He's an investor. He plays in the international commodity market. First, let me, let me get the thoughts of an economist, Professor Peter Corte. Are you surprised by these developments or, well, everybody is saying freight, it was expected, covered, or what, Prof? Well, good evening to you and to your uh, discerning viewers, as well as the panel uh, members. Um, it's, it's to be expected. I mean, if you look at some of the happenings, first you look at VAT. Uh, the VAT rate has been increased. Um, we have a one percentage point uh, being slapped for COVID-19 health levy. So certainly, uh, your import duty, how much you pay, will, will certainly go up. And obviously, that will be passed on to consumers. Then we have supply side constraints as well, um, mm -hmm. in terms of how much is being supplied to the market. Uh, raw materials now is, is not as easy as it used to be to yeah. source raw materials because uh, most of the factories globally we import a lot of raw material we have we use very few local substitutes we import quite a lot of them now you realize that um, some are running shifts because of covid 19 so we cannot operate at full capacity some workers will have to work others have to go off and so um, we haven't resumed fully we are not at full capacity and therefore raw material supply is not at its peak and that certainly would affect once demand outstrips supply, you will find prices uh, also um, going up. <clears throat> then also freight costs. Mm. Um, and most of the people in interview are saying the same thing, the freight charges. Um, these days, we are told that even some of the routes, the direct routes mm. that the containers uh, are used have changed because of restrict import restrictions and what have you. Uh, so it has to go around and, and therefore yeah. The container prices have either quadrupled or, or, or multiplied or doubled. So that again translates into higher prices for uh, consumers. Of course, we've imported inflation. A lot of the goods we consume are also imported. imported. Yeah. And, and once prices go up in the Western markets and we import them, we are importing inflation. Our exchange rate has been relatively stable, but still there's been some depreciation, yeah. I think we all know. Who answers to rate um, depreciates? It affects uh, how much we pay at the post. Last but not the least is our fuel price um, increases. Um, we saw increase in price at the pumps, and that affects transportation, transport, uh, how we transport, how much we pay to transport goods and services, and, and many, many, many other things. So um, these are some of the few things that I think is um, precipitating, uh, precipitating mm. this increase in, in prices that, mm. that we find on our market. So it's not mm. surprising mm. Uh, once some of these things are happening, you expect prices to go up. Mm. Prof, I'll be coming back to you to look at what policy measures can be introduced to manage the situation. But Dr. Saman Crab, I mean, you are an investor. You play in this uh, global commodity market as well. At your end, from the international perspective as well, what is driving the prices of these commodities in the international market? Are people not just producing enough or 
people like you who are in the transport and um, buying these commodities are just uh, trying to be smart, playing on us. Um, thanks so much. Good evening. And also, uh, thanks for your cherished listeners, George. I mean, you hit the nail right there in, in, uh, in the head. Some of these commodities, like crude oil, as you know, is priced elastic. So, and they are very necessary for households, businesses, and governments. So um, if there's a demand for it, obviously exceeding supply, it obviously pushes the prices up. For instance, crude oil uh, was hovering around, I think, $35 before yeah. COVID. Yeah. Now it's about $55 per barrel. Yeah. So there's a serious increase in the price here. So you got to understand that once there's an increase in price, obviously, would affect um, every other product because mm. it's price and elastic. Mm. So the price of crude oil is quite crucial in all this higher, what yeah. you call it, and it's from an international perspective, the spike in the price of commodities. And again, as you realize, the recent fires in California is mm. also part of it. The Arab war um, with Israel. So there have been few issues here and there. And again, I think there's a lot of money again, which is being spent. Everybody's trying to recover the economies after the COVID. So there's a lot of money going out there, trying to get uh, products or commodities into the various countries. So mm -hmm. once a lot of money is chasing the fewer goods, we expect price obviously to move up. Mm -hmm. So that's what is causing all this price hack mm -hmm. that we're seeing at the mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Samanka, another critical thing that has come up in all this discussion is about the cost of freight shooting up. And from your end, can anything be done about it? Because you are into these large transport commodities, moving them around and all the rest. Or listen, in countries in Africa and Ghana, there's little we can do about it. Well, again, we'll, we'll, we'll find ourselves in a situation where we're, we're not producing any of these vessels or any of these containers. We're heavily relying on the international market for supply. So obviously, whilst there's an, an issue that affects prices of these freight abroad, it's mm. obviously it's important to us as a, con as a country. So uh, there's a very, very, very little we can do as far as that is concerned. Um, we, we, at the moment, we have to import everything. We have to import most of our stuff. So if we're importing us coming in, we're importing all these things coming in, we need to also accept um, the global market situation. And the global market situation is dictating that the price of freight has gone extremely high due to various reasons like mm. COVID, continued reliance on slip, uh, split shipments. Mm. The Brit as it also obviously has caused um, price increase in freight. Um, there are several other factors. Um, everybody's relying on China mm. to produce. Europe is relying on China. America is relying on China. Everyone's relying on China. And China itself is a number one producer. They are also taking a lot of these containers. And mm. as the prices go up in there, it affects everything. So it's quite difficult for a country like Ghana to be able to cut ourselves from the issues affecting the international market mm. because we are relying heavily on imports as a country. The only way I can suggest we can get out, maybe if we produce locally mm. and I'll, support with the production locally, I'll, but that's for the I'll, 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 be, I'll, be, I'll be coming back, <laughs> I'll be coming more to that and, and the solutions <laughs> and the way forward. Let me bring in the critical actors and the traders, Dr. Joseph for being president of the Ghana Union of Traders. And with all these things that are happening, listen, maybe what do you make of it? And is it that, listen, there's nothing we can do about it. It would definitely pass on the cost to consumers. If you can um, That will not, yeah, yeah. We, we can definitely, we have to pass on the cost to the final consumer. But is that uh, the solution? Because the consumer to um, his purchasing power is limited. Mm -hmm. It's not that uh, his purchasing power is also increasing along the price increases. So if um, they become fatigued, it also translates into our turnover and suppresses our turnover, thereby also leading to collapse of our businesses. Mm -hmm. um, we see this, um, the causes of these price hikes on twofold. Um, one is globally uh, by the effect of the COVID, where world commodity prices have gone up astronomically high. Um, if you look at copper prices before COVID, COVID uh, before COVID, 
uh, broke up, the uh, copper prices used to be 5,300 per mm. ton. Um, now it has gone to um, 5,000, it has gone to 10,000. World uh, metal prices and steel prices have all gone up. That's why the um, iron rods and other building materials have also gone up. PVC mm. prices have gone up over 30 percent. So almost all raw materials that are used for yeah, production gone, have yeah. gone up um, a, a quite high, and thereby affecting our FOB prices. Mm. That's for FOB. Yeah. And then um, the production of our goods itself is now prolonged. If you used to produce your goods within um, one month, now the factory Will, 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 will be tossing you. Sometimes it will come to about three months before the goods are produced because of um, some challenges in their logistics and all that. And then when the shipment is also due, it's going to take you um, so, sometimes, mostly from China, it's about six weeks. Mm. But these days, it will take you about um, two months and over before you get your goods. So even... Production of one simple uh, uh, single container, mm. which used to be about um, a time duration of about two and a half months, now it goes about uh, five months. Mm. And it also goes with cost. If your capital is a borrowed one, it means that you'll be paying interest while uh, production is still mm. going on. Mm. Mm. Then mm. the almighty uh, free charges that have come to, that's the last straw that is breaking the back of the camel. Mm. That before COVID, a uh, 40 feet container was 3,000. As of today, that I'm talking, my supplier is due to ship my goods and he, he brought me the cost and it's 13,800 only today. That's from Guangzhou, China. And so, um, this, this is the difference. Mm, it's a mm, huge leap of mm. about 500% increment. Wow. And all these costs is, uh, yeah, that's the cost and fit. Um, to Tema. Then we have the local component um, that is also contributing. That will form about 30%. Mm. You recall that um, when um, the vice president was introduced in the paperless uh, policy and all that, we tried to prone down the the cost of doing business. At that time, at the port, there were um, about 19 um, levies and um, uh, um, charges at the port. Different, different forms of levies that um, numbered around 19. We were able to prune them down to about 12. Now, this is going up again. Okay. It, is, uh, uh, it, it keep on adding by the day. And then the shipping lines are also not helping us. Okay. Much as they've taken these huge free charges offshore, embedded in this cost is the operational cost locally. But they, they seem to duplicate these charges and come and charge us their operational cost uh, locally, which is not helping us. They are not heeding to the directives of uh, Ghana Shippers Authority, and this is causing us a, 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 a great deal. Okay. And then even if they have to charge you in dollars, they use their own um, um, dollar rate. They don't even use the... Uh, the the Bank of Ghana rate, then they they, they deliberately also delay clearance of goods. Once customs um, operate twenty four seven, these shipping lines uh, deliberately work up to four thirty a day, and they will not uh, even deem it fit to make even a ship system that will carry them through the twenty seven um, uh, the twenty four hour that the customs is doing. Okay. They don't also work on holidays. So the mortgages also keep compiling in. Okay. at this time. So, so, so Doc, I, I want to cut in here. I mean, the, the bit about passing on this cost to us, for instance, you heard what the Bristolers and Kumasi were saying. Can you have a situation where you can still reduce the prices or the size of some of these goods and still maintain the same price instead of uh, passing on this cost at a time when Salaries haven't seen any significant increase. People are still recovering from uh, the shocks of COVID-19. Yeah, the, the problem is that um, for the importing community or the trading community, the problem that we have here 
is the fact that you can also not overprice yourself out of competition. So nobody is even deliberately going to increase his prices. It is not possible. So then you see that you are losing and you are losing because you cannot overprice yourself. The purchasing power of this um, consumer is limited. So it's not that when you increase it. Let me tell you, those of you who have been buying cable, cable used to be uh, 90 cities for cable metal, 95 cities or so. Now they are selling it almost 170. Mm. Look at the quantum difference and all that. Okay. How, how much more can you go for a, a consumer whose purchasing power is just constant, mm -hmm. which is not is increasing along the price increases? So if you do that, it means that you are uh, surcharging him unnecessarily and surcharging yourself because you cannot mm. sell and your business mm. uh, mm. businesses are going to collapse. Let this is the situation that we find ourselves. Okay. So it's not that we have the luxury even to pass on the cost. You don't have a choice. Mr. Charles Mensa, I mean, you... The, 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 the reason why I was talking, I was dwelling so much on the shipping lines yeah. is that whilst um, the, the, the component of the um, shipping cost in the, the whole clearance system is 6.8%. So How is that of Togo is 0.8%? Okay. okay. So let, let, let's find a way to, to control that one. This, um, 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 this shipping line, the multinationals who are forming cartels to... to I'll, be, uh, I'll, be, I'll be bringing in Dr. Samankra about what can be done. But let me get to Dr. Charles, Charles Mensah. Sorry, Charles Mensah, I mean, you are a business strategist. With all these things happening... What can businesses be doing? I mean, it is not a good time. Just when COVID was kind of uh, being brought under control a little bit, now there is this. From the small business owner to the big businesses, what should they be doing right now? Cutting down production or laying off workers? George, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope I can be, uh, you can, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, Charles. Excellent. Um, I think... I'm a bit sad because most of the conversation that my earlier speakers spoke to were purely importation of items. And this brings me to the point of domestication. I mean, the earlier tape you played about Kumasi and bread, everybody was talking about important, important, important. I think it's high time that there should be a strategy where if you take flour, for instance, we can produce flour here. I recall that some years back, Brazil started doing cassava bread, and cassava was grown locally. So if you take um, um, bread, for instance, we should be able to have a strategy to have alternative, and the cassava bread is there, and it's locally produced. So it will not be affected by the uh, container uh, uh, freight charges or whatever happens, or the shortage in China in terms of production, uh, uh, factories going down. So we have to develop and continue to encourage local production by look, using local raw materials. We can't do it because if you take what happened with during the COVID situation where the sanitizers were all imported then, in no time, Ghanaians pick up the challenge and they all started producing sanitizers here locally. Yes, prices are going up because, uh, like Prof said, there's has been an increase in COVID. Because we all enjoyed free uh, beats a couple of uh, months back. And those ones have to be funded. And government cannot continue to borrow to fund those things. So they have to uh, raise revenue through taxes. So that's why you notice that some taxes have gone up. And once taxes go up, prices will go up. And that's what is happening in the system. Mm. Now, bread price has gone up slightly, but there are certain things that is fully locally made that hasn't gone up yet. Why? Because the raw material, everything is there. It's, lo it's locally made. So we should encourage those things. Now, when it comes to the solutions, the local things that some of my... Uh, uh, Businesses clients, can do, yeah. Some of our clients are doing. If you take bread, <laughs> it's a shame, though, but then some are beginning to reduce the size of the bread so that they can still meet the price of five cities instead of going to six cities because it's convenient. Because once it's six cities, that means that when you give 10 cities, 
you have to look for a balance. If five cities is easy to sell, to pick up. Yeah. So they are beginning to you know, reduce the, 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 the quantity or, or, or the size of the bread. So you not only to tell the consumer, but they've shaped the bread. You know, some have started, some of the kind that I know, have started doing that. Um, and it's a way of, for them to survive. Mm. But yes, prices will go up. But let's encourage more of domestic production because it's the only way. Mm. In a country where, if you look at your tax component, the tax revenue for government itself, and you look at the percentage that is attributable to imported revenue from taxes, mm. that means that most of our taxes are all coming from importers. So therefore, anything that happens abroad would have impact on domestically. So that's thing we need to look at it critically. I like the way there's a policy of manufacturing or assembly cars here. Yeah. In itself, it's going to help us. So that kind of holistic approach to things. So let's pick flour as one, rice as two, and make it locally so that it will not be affected. Cement as three. Mm. Let's do these things locally so that things will not escalate. Okay. Because to shoot uh, $4,000 for a container to 12000 someone has to bear the cost. So they yeah. must go to us. I see. So I'm afraid we'll continue to explain that price increase. Let's mm. do a holistic approach and target specific sectors. Mm. Mr. Charles, I'll come back to you again because all these things, they're going to increase cost of production. And at this time, that would not be good for businesses. Professor Peter Cote is an economic prof. So what can government do in trying to manage the situation right now? I know that if I talk about taxes, it will be a no-go area right now. But I also let my producer pull up a, a, I mean, a, a map, a data from the Ghana Fiscal Service. This whole idea about import inflation, it appears that goods coming from outside are rather cheap compared to what we are producing locally. My producer will pull this thing on the stage a little bit going forward. This, is, this one wasn't that we look at the other one, rather, in terms of uh, how import inflation, this whole argument about import inflation and what things. So these are imported. I don't know whether my, my, my panelists can have a look at this. This is from the Ghana Statistical Service. And if you look at the various months, you're looking at imported and local goods ending June 21. If you look at, for instance, uh, June, the yellow one is for imported. You look at the green bar is for local goods. It appears that the local goods are rather more expensive. If I want to judge by the fact that uh, this inflation is measuring the price levels of these goods. So interesting data they're coming from, the Ghana and Skull Service. So let me get back to Professor Peter Cote. Solutions. Can we review these taxes? Can we vary them? Or what can be done right now? Because from all the projections, and even we had news this morning about farmers complaining about droughts, crude oil prices are not going to slide anytime soon. More challenging times ahead for us. Prof, if you were a finance minister right now, what should you be doing or what will you be doing? I think I will take off from where the Charles Mensah uh, landed. Um, basically speaking about developing local substitutes. Um, um, that is the way to go. We cannot continue to import everything. We ought to develop local substitutes. And we've seen in the 1D1F uh, initiative, one district, one factory initiative, where uh, some are using uh, um, potato to produce bread and many other things. So, and, and there are several areas we see this local substitutes being um, developed or produced as a result of government policy. Um, planting for food and jobs, these are all uh, government strategies to produce more of what we consume. That is why you saw that even during COVID, um, our Greek sector was quite resilient and uh, we, we didn't have food shortages who were able to, to survive COVID. But it's what, what we have a very brilliant policy in terms of industrialization, the 10 point industrialization strategy where we produce um, some of the things that, that even our local, the car assembly plants and other uh, automobile industries will be using. Mm. Um, that for me is the way to go, find mm. the money and ensure that this 10 point industrialization strategy is mm. uh, implemented. Mm. Mm. Then mm. back to the uh, taxes and levies. I believe every tax regime is meant to raise revenue, but we ought to review. That's why for me, one of the things I expect from the media uh, review is for the finance minister to tell us how much he's been able to raise from these 
new taxes and levies. Of mm. course, we ought to pay for the freebies we enjoy doing. But Prof, even sorry to cut then, you in, but he's saying that the minister told us in an interview that in terms of half year, GRA was just 1% short of meeting the target. And it appears that taxes are doing well. So maybe it may be a good time to maybe share with us, review some of these yeah, taxes. Exactly. The, the details will be the, the students or the student is, is in the eating. We want to know the details of what is in there. Uh, maybe the old taxes uh, that, that are raking in the revenue, not the new ones or the new levies. We ought to know. If they are what we term the nuisance taxes, we ought to know so that if there is a need to scrap them and look for better ways of raising revenue because some of the taxes may affect businesses and that can have repercussions on their production, on their employment, on even paying taxes again mm. or government revenue. So a review, in my view, will be very uh, appropriate. Mm. Then lastly, uh, you hear a lot of levies within the port system. Yeah. There's yeah. lack of harmonization. So this one is using different exchange rates. This one is using different, you know, levies. There, there has to be some harmonization of taxes and levies within at the port uh, uh, so that traders will be very much informed about what they are paying and, and be able to plan ahead. I think these are the few things that mm. I believe mm. if we do, mm. uh, it will help us mm. uh, minimize the effect mm. of this uh, mm. inflation or price increases mm. on consumers and, and on businesses. And Prof, do you see this as an immediate solution? Because as I said that, I saw a report this morning in Daily Graphic about farmers complaining that there are some imminent drought as well. Crude oil prices would not be sliding anytime soon. So we are really in for a long ride. Yeah, some, some can be long term strategies. Uh, I mean, if you want to implement some of your industrial uh, programs and there are some are not immediate, something you do within a month or two. Some might take three years or four years or even 10 years. But some are low hanging fruits. Harmonizing the tax system within the port. I mean, if you need to have regulation and ensure that uh, these taxes are harmonized uh, across the board. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, I spoke about reviewing the new taxes. If they are they are efficient, then that's fine. But if they are not bringing in the needed revenue, we may review them and see where we can even raise more revenue mm -hmm. at least at the least cost and, and try to introduce that in the system. Mm -hmm. Dr. Samankra, with these uh, shipping lines. I mean, you heard from the Guta president. It appears that they are also doing their own. I mean, they are doing their own thing. What can we do with them in trying to manage the situation? I also get your thoughts on what government should be doing, Dr. Samankra, since you you play in this space in commodity trading and all those things. Doc, if you can hear me, Dr. Samankra, I'm just trying to get your thoughts on the, yes. what we can do. What can we do with these shipping lines? George, I mean, I have to be very, very honest with you here. The shipping industry has been one of the worst hit sectors by the COVID-19 pandemic. Firstly, all, all the major producing um, oil nations cut production drastically due to the pandemic. So it's, it has seriously created a demand and supply imbalance, resulting in pricing pressures on them. So if these companies are facing these problems, or these challenges, I would say, it's very difficult for them to reduce their prices or say exports to countries like Ghana. So, like all of us have been saying, they themselves have, have suffered. I mean, as you know, the pandemic really took them through a very turbulent time. So they are trying to recover. But the good news here is this is not going to be a permanent situation. Is that in the medium to long term, demand is going to stabilize. And then obviously the prices will also be stabilized. But the only solution to these problems, as we've been saying, is to be able to produce locally. Mm. That's the only way out. Mm. Mm. If there's no local production and we are relying on the Greeks and uh, whatever, Germans and other people, the, the Dutch and so forth, to use your vessels, transport these products into us, and they are having challenges and the price over the roof as a result of what is happening internationally, then we should expect that that is going to be passed on to us as a country. Interesting. Dr. Joseph Obeng, I mean, immediate solutions to immediate problems. If there are any levies or things that you think can be done right now to help you reduce your prices, what do you think you'd be proposing? Getting some immediate actions from government, from 
port authorities and all the rest to try and manage the situation? What would you propose? Yeah. Um, what is uh, the global effects? Um, we cannot do anything about it. But what we can do locally, we have to find a pragmatic solution to solve it. Like and that's why um, um, we uh -huh. petitioned Customs Ghana Revenue Authority not to adopt the ever escalating free charges into computing their um, uh, duties. And uh, you, if you recall, we, we made a press release on that. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I presume they've, um, they've um, taken note of it. They didn't do it. And then also, um, the most of our cost is coming from the shipping lines. Hmm. There should be some uh, controls immediately mm -hmm. so that um, they do not pass on this um, cost to us. And then um, when we were making the, uh, the budget, we proposed that uh, businesses are overburdened with taxes. The solution is not increasing taxes. The solution is to expand the tax net. And we, that we, we should find um, um, a way, innovative way of introducing um, a, a negligible uh, taxes. Because taxes, when they are not um, compliant with, if you do not comply with the tax, then it's meaningless. Mm. But if it is not affordable, that's why we do not even comply with the tax payment. Mm. But if taxes are very affordable and all that, everybody gets in. Because the um, the four percent incre in, uh, increment in the uh, VAT affects uh, provisions. Even the three percent, they were really uh, under the effect of provisions because of the chain of distribution. They were very much affected. That's why uh, those who's, who are selling the provisions are uh, crying that enough. much. Okay. And so, if you have to look at that again, it will um, help uh, us a lot. Mm. And mm. then we're talking about. Uh, productivity, the local productivity. Let me tell you, if you look at your graph, all that it means is that we cannot produce everything. It means that those things that we produce locally, that the prices are high. It means that we can simply not be able to produce from within. Because if you compare most of these um, local uh, products here, if you compare the FOB prices, most of them, they are disadvantaged. At the way go, they are disadvantaged of about 40% price difference. That's the reason why we are able to travel, go and buy these goods outside, come and pay duty and still be able to compete with them. Mm. So what we have to do is to dwell, make a conscious effort to find those areas that we have a comparative advantage, period. Mm. Because the world is independent. So the fact that the world is inter interdependent means that there are certain things that we are sourced from outside. But then we should be able to identify some product that we have the comparative advantage. And uh, there are so many things that are coming up that the prices are also cheap here. Mm. We should make a deliberate effort to encourage and then make those products a hub of production in this country. That's where we can make a huge difference. But we cannot pretend that we can produce everything. That mm. is that is not possible because there is a thin line between importation and manufacturing of the most of the goods. About seventy percent of the goods that we produce locally, because about ninety percent of their uh, uh, manufacturing components are also imported. imported yeah. Yeah. And what difference does it make? It still mm. makes the price very high. Mm. So the the onus lies on us to mm. identify. The, uh, uh, the areas that we have the raw materials to our advantage, like the 1D1F structures that the professor was talking about. You see the clay. Clay abounds here. And so those people who are doing the tiles, they are making it. Okay. And it's very attractive. It means that we can, and uh, we have identified clay as a okay. positive area, and we can encourage a lot more people to go into the clay, uh, the tiles manufacturing and all that, and then Ghana can become a hub in the tar production, in the cashew um, um, add, uh, add, uh, value added um, uh, addition in cashew cocoa products. Those things that we have, the products that are bounced here, like the eco juice. Yeah, I mean, it has become uh, uh, so people like it, people are buying it. We, we identify those areas and then 
make sure that we are the hub of producing that and it will make us rich let and then it can help us. Let me bring in quickly Professor Peter Kote who took a short break. Prof, so for you, with respect to what is happening right now, should we be worried about the larger impact on the economy? Inflation has started trending up that has impact on cost of living. Well, certainly, I mean, when prices are going up is uh, and the way things are happening, if there is no intervention, conscious intervention, that is going to affect uh, cost of living, that is going to affect people's livelihood. And once livelihood is threatened, it uh, becomes a problem. It may lead to social unrest and so on and so forth. So we should be concerned at this point, try and, and arrest the situation as much as possible. Uh, one way is to increase supply. Uh, whether domestic or imported, we have to increase supply of goods on, on the market so that we can dampen the effects of inflation. Mm. Well, we take a short break, and Professor Peter Cote is an economist. Uh, Charles Mensah is a financial consultant. Dr. Samankra is an investor. He plays in the commodity market. And Dr. Joseph Obeying is president of the Ghana University Association. We'll take a short break and be right back as we wrap up with my guest on the way forward and how to manage the situation. This is PM Express Business Edition. And it's not our best friend will be wrapping up very soon as I get my thoughts from my panelists as we draw the curtain down to look at how we should manage the situation in terms of the surge in prices of goods on the market. Mr. Charles Mensah, for you, way forward solutions when it comes to businesses as you try and wrap up. Mr. Charles Menzer, if you can hear me, wait for okay. solutions on this particular issue for those who are playing in your space as businesses. I think now in terms of solution, it would, it would encourage um, even policymakers or government to allow more equity participation in agro-processing and the um, uh, manufacturing by the second tier pension fund. Why? Because the cost of capital is pretty high. So when we introduce equity into those sectors, it will really help the manufacturing companies and agro-processing. Secondly, if that, that equity participation is not going to happen, then there must be some fund that will be given to industry at a reduced rate because they cannot compete with traders okay. who just import and distribute. So they have to be encouraged by giving them maybe 8% per annum. Then we are able to import, uh, to, to manufacture and process, and their pricing will be good because you can absorb. But when you are born at 24%, 26%, you will definitely will pass on the cost of capital to the final consumer. So mm -hmm. price tends to go up. Mm -hmm. So maybe going forward, this equity and reduction in the cost of uh, the interest rate for specific, not, not holistic, specific industry could help us going forward. Thank you very Professor much. Professor Peter Cote, from the macro perspective as an economist, um, what should be the way forward as an immediate actions now? Since you talk about if this is not managed well, some social unrest, and that is where we don't want to go. We've seen what is happening in South Africa. Well, they say Ghana is a peaceful country. Immediate actions, immediate solutions. I think one, one key area will be to manage our expectations about future price increases. Because if we continue to discuss it and raise people's expectations that prices are going to increase, uh, some uh, market players will take advantage and start hoarding. And that will not augur well for us. You, if you recall, during the first few weeks of the lockdown, we saw uh, people hoarding food and other things, and that led to price hikes. But later, that moderated. So. Um, we need to really discuss this very well and manage people's expectations of our future price increases. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if there is that expectation that prices are going to, going to continue to increase, yeah. that is going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Then secondly, we need to support the local production, the value chain process. We don't just support seed and leave marketing and leave uh, inputs. The total value chain in agriculture as well as industry we have to be supported so that there will be backward and forward linkages. Mm. Whatever we produce locally within the agri sector can be passed on to the industrial sector to add value. Um, and that would minimize uh, price uh, expectations. Mm. Finally, I think the review of the tax system uh, in the media review uh, will tell us whether we need to maintain these taxes and levies 
or find other means of raising revenue. Mm. Dr. Samankra, you are also a businessman. What do you want right now from regulators and even government to try and manage the situation right now for you? Dr. Samankra, if you can uh, unmute your yes. volume. Yeah. What do you want right now as a businessman so that we can... Well, yeah, George, my advice to government at this stage is very simple. You shouldn't panic. It's a global issue. The short to medium term commodity prices increase will obviously ultimately slow down. The long run, the long run post recovery as economic activity becomes normal and also demand would be stabilized. However, more than ever, expert advice is very critical here. In as much as it's a global issue, how quick and strategic they come out will determine how they are able to meet their targets and goals set up. So if it means procuring experts from abroad or wherever it is, mm. strategic thinkers and economists to support the Ministry of Finance to come out of this situation, I think is very crucial mm. because getting out of this situation is very important and how they get out of it also most important. So the government needs to take a critical look at it going forward. Mm. And then again, they should support local businesses. I mean, okay. that, is, that is the only way they can stimulate the economy. Okay. Local businesses need to be supported, whether it's rebates, whether okay. it's tax incentives, whatever it is, they have to encourage that okay. so that the businesses would help stimulate the economy. Mm. We need to accelerate infrastructure development, okay. roads, railway, housing, construction. All these needs to be done. I mean, we all has, has to be on deck. Okay. Government needs to have deliberate policies towards these directions. Okay. Because if the economy is not stimulated, but what is happening around will become very difficult. You'll be thinking going down and down. And obviously, before we realize, as you said, it will lead to... Um, unrest which is happening elsewhere, which we hope it will never happen okay. here. If the right policies are being followed through, if the expert advices are being taken, I suppose and I believe that we'll be able to mm. come out successfully as a country and move on to the economic boom that we all expect. Dr. Joseph Obing, in a minute, please. What do you want traders as you wrap up? In a minute. Yeah, I, I think the ban uh, being the cost of borrowing, the cost of capital acquisition is so high. And um, we should find um, a, a way to bring it down. When the um, policy rate comes down, there should be a me mechanism to bring bring down. There should be a cap somewhere. They, they can't just uh, 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 take it all, the banks. It's not fair. Okay. So um, mm -hmm. that's the uh, problem. So we should find a way to make cost of borrowing affordable. We, mm -hmm. are, we are losing out because of that. Perfect. That's it. Okay. Dr. Joseph Abeng, President of Guta, Immense Tank, Charles Mensa, a financial consultant, a business strategist. Thank you so much, Professor Peter Kote. He is an economist and also Dr. Samankra is an investor and also plays in the international commodity market. I appreciate your time so much as you draw the curtain down on this. We looked at the surge in price of goods and services and I know the debate was still go on. A big government may have to act right now to save the situation. That's all for PM Express Business Edition. Have a great day.